Anthony. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Awesome. You, and I, you and I have talked a lot over the last two weeks. I'm telling you, I, I, it's, it's getting a lot of fun. We're, we're, uh, people are going to start talking. Uh, people are going to start talking. Do you know what I like is the energy I get during your call and afterwards. I get off and I'm like, hey, I, there's this vibration. I, I'm, I'm going somewhere. You know, it is, uh, it is fun when we're living, right. When we're actually out there living, right. Getting on, getting on the court rather than on the, in the, in the uh, stands, watching mm -hmm. people play when we're on the court playing, uh, it really is a lot of fun and, and it really lights up, uh, uh, people and us and, and our lives and people around us. Uh, I think that's the fun place to play. Yeah. I, well, let's talk about getting on the court because today our topic is rethink the remodel. And you, you did something incredible. I mean, this is really, talk about bringing entrepreneurship to business. You took a business process, a construction process that used to take five weeks and you brought it down to 14 days. Am I correct? I mean, I, 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 I'm telling you right now that my whole thing is I started in this business early on, right? You know, I, I first, of all, first, before I get into all this, first of all, thank you for letting me be on your podcast. Oh, I course. love your podcast. I love listening to your podcast. You have some amazing content for the last couple of years. I've listened to a lot of your content you. and uh, the body of work that you have in the audience. I'm, I'm first of all, I'm proud to be on here. Uh, you know, I told my wife, I'm like, this is the one I'm excited to be on. I, I haven't been on a podcast this exciting in a while. So first of all, thank, thank you. you for letting me uh, do this. I, I'm, I'm uh, grateful to be here. And Thanks, so, I, uh, I, I got into construction, uh, you know, similar to you got into construction, right? I, we were both painters. I, I uh, worked my way through college uh, <laughs> painting. I, I, I wasn't going to be, a, I wasn't going to be a construction guy. I wanted to be a stockbroker. I thought I was going to be Gordon Gecko. I thought for sure I was going to be Wolf yeah. of Wall Street by now. Uh, you know, I went through the eighties and where people, it was fun. I became a broker. I did all that stuff. And then I realized I didn't really, that wasn't my thing, but I learned to sell and I learned how to talk to customers and mm. it was great to be able to do that. And I started this little painting company. And as I told you the other day, I was my worst painter, right? Oh, I, gosh, I, I was me great. too. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Great selling, but when it came to cutting in a line, but what it taught me was how to do things in a way that worked. So uh, we figured out it was down in Florida and we were painting uh, roofs and, and painting houses. And we figured out how to, how to use tape and paper and, and cover everything that wasn't going to get painted so that me, Anthony, the owner wouldn't paint everything you know, that we had to go back and clean. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we were able to figure out how to do houses uh, in, a, in a very, you know, and what we did was we figured out how to do it uh, with a system. So uh, it took two days to paint a house mm. and we figured out how to do it every, every, every single time, the exact same way. And what it meant was we'd go in there, we'd prep the house first. We'd, we'd dig along the base of the house. We'd go and we'd uh, uh, trim back all the, all the, all the hedges. We'd right. tape and paper everything that wasn't going to get painted doorknobs, windows, uh, lights, anything that wasn't going to get painted on there. We yeah. wanted to protect. We, we spent a lot of money on, on, on those masking. Pit tape. I know. Yeah. The, it looks like a packing tape uh, handle. And, yeah. 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 And we spent a lot of money doing that. And that was the system right there. We figured out if we taped that off and then uh, my guys would, would start spraying. We had airless sprayers and we'd oh, spray. Oh, you guys sprayed. I see. I never sprayed. I never sprayed because the neighbors in the areas I painted, I painted in a very affluent area. And as soon as they saw that sprayer come off the truck, they would walk over and say, you just oversprayed my car. And I just, I was a kid. I'm like, I don't think I did. And they're like, well, you got to fix it. And so I detailed so many cars or had to paid for it. I stopped spraying. <laughs> my, my system went the other way. I'm like, we're just rolling. We're going to charge everybody to roll. We, we got that sprayer down and we had fun doing it. So our guys would roll a uh, spray around the house. One guy would back roll and we would spray. And the gig was uh, as soon as we got the first coat done, the trim guys would start. And, okay. uh, the, and, and by the way, if the, if the guys spraying could catch up to the trim guys, they were allowed to paint them. So you want to talk about keeping guys moving, right? We have a little motivation there. Like, like you would die to catch up to the trim guys. And Jimmy, why is your leg all green? Ah, oh, the trim guy caught up to me. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of like a like a badge of honor to to get through with a clean set of whites on, and uh, you'd make it through. So you know, it, we learned then how to do it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And you know, I, I got uh, my first gig was uh, painting a discovery zone. You got, I don't know if you remember the playgrounds for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So these were all different colors and uh, I figured out, and by the way, the contractor who talked me to doing it, right. I definitely gave it to me, right? I definitely got, I, I definitely got. Uh, oh, he uh, sold you. You didn't sell him. Oh, I, it was a, my first commercial job. I went from this little residential guy to doing a commercial job and I just wanted to do commercial work. I'm like, oh my God, you're going to hire me. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to do that. And uh, he took advantage of me with the price, but I also got to learn how to do it. And what's fun about it was 
I, I looked at the job and everything was a different color. Ductwork was one color. Oh my there goodness. Was, the thing about that place is you can't go in there with a headache. The colors are. No, no, everything. So yeah. what I learned to do was I took all the duck work and I took it out in the, in the parking lot before they put it up there and I painted it all on the ground. Oh, and this was new construction. You, it, new you construction. weren't taking the duck work down. No, no, no. So it was new construction, oh, okay. putting new stuff up and I painted all the round duck out there and I painted yeah. all the electrical pipe, all the water pipe was one color, all the electrical pipes were another color. And I painted it all on the ground and the, and the, and the project manager goes, how'd you think of that kid? I'm like, well, it's Florida and these units didn't have any air conditioning on. And you know how hot it is up there by the oh, ceiling? I, so I you came at it by accident. Yeah, I know. I was like, I, I don't want to die up there. I mean, <laughs> you get up on a ladder 12 feet on Florida in yeah. a building, you're up next to the roof, you know, it's it's 25 degree difference up there. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, in the middle of summer, I like, I thought this would be smarter. I could just touch up paint it once it was once it, it was up yeah. there. And the guy goes, wow, this is the first time anybody did this. All the projects we've done, the painter takes a month to get in here. And you figured out how to do all this stuff before. And I'm like, yeah, this is, and he's like, well, it's just another way of looking at it. So he invites me to this project up, up to Chicago for yeah. a, a yeah. cost cutting deal, deal that the company was Hold doing. Hold on. You're a painter. You've done, you've yeah. gone from residential to commercial. You do a job yeah. in Florida at a discovery zone and he invites you up to Chicago. Free ticket. He goes, I'm going to buy you a ticket to Chicago kid. And I, and I go up there and I walk in. And first of all, I thought my knees were knocking. It was 33rd floor of a high rise building in downtown Chicago. Oh, yeah. when, I, when I get yeah. off the train from the airport, I take the train or I get, I get off the train and I get in the middle of the city. My knees are knocking. I, I, dumb. I'm telling you right now, little redneck kid from Florida. I'm like, they're going to find out I'm a scam. They're oh, out the imposter syndrome, home. Anthony. I'm That's awesome. the imposter syndrome. Yeah, I, for sure. I think to myself, they're going to find out. And I walk in and the guy goes, this is refreshing, right? You're, you're young. He goes, Hey, can I hire you? And I'm like, well, I got this business. I'm going to be a stockbroker. And I go back down to Florida after this meeting yeah. and someone stole my trailer. And somebody, stole, my, somebody stole your trailer? So, yeah, well, while I was gone. I had this little trailer with all my painting stuff yeah, in it, all my yeah, yeah. drop cloths, my pressure cleaners, all this stuff. Someone stole it while I was gone. Oh, no. And I look up in the air and I go, hey, hey, hey dude, uh, I guess you're telling me something. And I call the guy back up and I say, uh, uh, hey, I'll take the job. And a month later, I, I live in Chicago, a little redneck kid from Florida lived in Chicago. And, and uh, the story changed. And it was great because I was scared to death. And I think stepping through that fear was such a wonderful experience. Like it didn't bite. They, they were actually great yeah. men. And they, they took care of me and they wanted to help me. And uh, the first day on the job, my second day in the job, I was in Puerto Rico. They flew me from what? I, 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 yeah, my second day. I, I in Puerto Rico. That is, this is an amazing, this story is moving real fast. So you started in Florida. You went to a meeting yeah. in Chicago, came back home. Your tra your trailer was stolen. You said yes. Yeah. They said okay, get on a plane to Puerto Rico. And were you still <laughs> doing discovery zones, or what was the yeah, what was, was this? I was, I, was, I was a I I was a junior. I wasn't even a project manager. I was a junior project manager. My right. job was to go around the playgrounds. They, you know, they had these big ball bins and slides and all that stuff. Yeah. And my job, I wore a suit, and my job was to go around with a torque wrench and just make sure that when they were building the new stores that they were built. So the, the, the subcontractor built up and my job was to inspect them and make sure there's no sharp edges and the kids weren't going to get okay. hurt. And I could yeah. be kind of a safety guy. Right. And uh, the, my boss said to me, Hey, this the, the guy who builds these things, he, he's a founder. He goes, but he builds them in his front yard. He, he, he's a millionaire and he builds them in his front yard. Then he dis disassembles them and he sends them to us. Right. And it takes him a, a month per playground. He goes, we want to build 400 of these in a year. This isn't going to work. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, yeah, no, sorry, so like, Anthony, what kind of play are these wooden playgrounds? Are these the, this, uh, this injection molded plastic? What are they? Yeah. Yeah. Those injected molded plastic, right? The okay. big ones, like the yeah. in front of McDonald's, but they're really oh, big. Oh, I got you. Okay. So in front of McDonald's, that kind, right. With the slide and everything. Okay. Yeah. So big giant slides, the ball bins, the, the play, and they were fun, right? And at the time they had these playgrounds and they had these uh, party rooms and uh, so my, my job was to go and inspect them. And, and, and then he said, go work with the founder of the company, the guy who invented yeah. this whole thing, go to his house and take this CAD guy. And I need you to figure out how we're going to make these faster. How are you going to do this faster? I'm like, wow, I sat there with a the guy and we started looking at it and we played with them and we got to build a couple of them. We, we took them apart and we built them. Yeah. And we, what if we made kits out of each area? And, and me and this guy with the AutoCAD, we measured up every single every component and we made little kits and we yeah. went to the vendor and said, Hey, could you guys cut these pipes? You know, like the tubes, could you pre-cut those for a slide? You know, could you cut the end at a 45 here? Could you, and then oh, we'll make I that, 
I'll make that a slide and you'll send it to us as a kit. And so we started making these little kits. And what was fun about that was all of a sudden we, we componentized the entire playground. <clears throat> and then my wow. boss said, that was genius. He goes, well, now we need to warehouse this stuff. Can you go down and, and you're going to, I mean, imagine I'm a young kid and I'm, I'm in my. No handrails in your life, Anthony. You're just going for uh, it. No, and, and living on, and I got to work with the guys who ran the warehouse and yeah. then my job to go out and do these playgrounds. And that was great. So I traveled and I learned and Dominic, what I loved about it was I got to, uh, you know, it pushed me, it kept pushing me. Now, somewhere in there, I, I got to work for uh, those guys and then they stopped building and they, they sent me to, to Blockbuster Video and then those guys stopped building and I got to go from those guys to Boston Market and those guys stopped building. Boston and then I Market. Wow. You remember Boston Market? Right? Yeah. 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 And, and I got to learn how to build, you know, the faster and faster. And, uh, you know, no one has ever said build slower. I've never met an owner or anybody who said, no. you know, get done when you're no, done. Take your time. Take your yeah. well, build slow is how my dad builds our cottage up in the up at the lake, but but that's because he just loves doing it. So is this how CDO Group? Because you run CDO Group right now. We haven't. Well, yeah, yeah. Is so that I, how it I came ended, to be? Yeah. So I ended up uh, leaving them and go to Panera Bread, and some guys I worked with at, at Boston Market started CDO Group, and they're oh. great guys. And, and, and they said, "Look, we want to be developers, and we're gonna you'll do the construction, we'll do the real estate." Hmm. And uh, we started looking at it. I said well, what if I went offered construction services to all these companies we worked for? And they were like, well, sure. And I did. I went out to these companies and I said, hey, I, I want to I be your outsourced construction guy. And they said to me, well, we've already got a GC. I go, no, 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 no. I, I want to help you be a project manager on an outsourcing basis. We're like, well, we have internal people. I go, we'll do your overflow work. And back then, 25 years ago, no one had done, there was no such thing as outsourcing your construction work. Yeah. And back then, Well, hang on, Anthony. Right now, some people don't think it's, it's a thing and it exists. The global market for outsourcing is nipping away at people. It's picking away at them. They don't know it. It's coming and it's here already. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Oh, it's here. It's here. So for 25 years now, we have worked for brands. Uh, so the biggest brands in the world. I mean, one of the biggest hamburger brands, the burrito brands, the uh, the big the, the coffee brands. We've we've done thousands of stores for them. And and what we what's really became great was we learned how to do is how to make each project a system. You know, how do you, you, so you asked me at the, how do you get a five or an eight week project down to 14 days? That's incredible. I mean, you, cause I'm sure you sold that in the boardroom at some point saying we can do this. Did it's you job exactly. automatically from five to 14 days or did it go from five weeks to four weeks and then from four weeks to three? Like how, how did you, what was that transition? So what I will what I'll tell you, Dominic, it, it doesn't happen that way. No, no matter what, if you try to do just a little bit bigger on a construction project, the problem is just a little bit bigger gets you a little bit of an advance. You know, here, like 1% in business helps you. Like when I, every day I come into my office and I try to do 1% more. And sure. in business that helps you. But the problem with construction is it's people, right? So you just get that one person to do it just a little bit better. And the, by next week, that person's gone. And what you have to learn about in construction is the system you operate in has to change. It can't be just Bob's going to pick that up and move that over a, a, a second. It's got to be the way that we think about a project has to change. And I will tell you the number one thing that we do, the number one game changer is that most people show up like cowboys, right? And our business is full of Who, cowboys. Like the, the PMs or the GCs or the staff or the, like the laborers? All of the above, right? Oh, of, of, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Dominic, first of all, first of all, we lied to ourselves, right? We, we said, uh, hey, I, I could do it for how much? I could do it for eight bucks. Yeah. And how much? Or, 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 I could do it for 10. Dominic, how much can you do it for? Uh, well, yeah, nine. nine. Nine, nine, right, right. Hey, Eric, how much can you do it for? You can do it for eight. All right, Eric's got it for eight over there. Now we give it to Eric and Eric thinks, well, I can, I can do this for eight bucks. Now the problem is that Eric didn't tell you that he's not like you or I, Dominic, we've got a staff and he's, he's, he was like the young Anthony just coming in. He's he a solo saw, guy. Yeah. He saw his keys over the fence and he's going to try to do this project. And he's going to figure it out. <laughs> now the problem is you need it done in a, in a scheduled time. And, yeah. and, and Dominic and Anthony could have done it for, you know, with the team, but now you got the price. And now the problem is the teams is not there. So now the work that they can do, is not matched by the, the by the production and the schedule and that the just quality the and the, yeah that's right it's a, it's a domino effect and and at the end the customer ends up paying the the the, the eight or ten bucks so, anyway so so that everybody gets this because I think you said something that's going to be a big takeaway from this show in construction if I train one person 
he could leave or be assigned to another job site. So that training, while still important, doesn't add value back to me as the PM or the GC. So where does your where does where do you find the inflection point in your systems so that it sticks? It's awesome. That is exactly the thing to figure out, right? So what we do is we start weeks before the project starts. Okay. Now most people in construction show up at the job site and they six gun from there, right? As ah, people show up, they all try to figure out, all right, you over here, you go over there, you go over here. And, and, and I can tell you that'll get you so far, but the problem is it's too late. The parts, the pieces, the communication, mm. it's too late. Where you've got to start is 20 weeks before you start the project. <laughs> now people say, well, I didn't have 20 weeks. Well, cause I, I the owner and, and right. I'm saying you're not doing them any favor by rushing into the start and half starting it. Right. It's, it's in spending the time. And when I say this, the, that project we talked about, that, that going from eight weeks to 14 days, I, I will tell you that my staff will tell you that their ears bled. Literally, their ears <laughs> bled by how many yeah. times we went through that schedule. And, and it's a nauseam from how the customer picked the design, how we ordered the equipment. Sure. So that, that process starts with 20 weeks out. Now, what happened was we were doing 6,000 store remodel for, for a company, right? This hamburger brand. You were 6, doing 6,000 individual units. And, and they're all somewhere in that $350,000 range, right? That 250,000 to 350,000. And you want to do those in 14 days, right? And we're getting from, from stud to stud, uh, roof joists to floor fin- or to under slab. Oh my to slab, goodness. <clears throat> just slab, slab finish. And we're going to do that in 14 days. And that includes underground plumbing, moving fixtures, and includes front counters. That includes Electrical, HVAC, safety systems, fire systems. Everything. Now, now did, the, did the restaurants get shut down while you're doing this or were they still running with it? Now, what's amazing was we left the drive throughs open. So that it's still a functioning restaurant and you're doing the reno. Fully function. Now, Dominic, how we did that was yeah. we had to really get some safety stuff in place, right? Because you couldn't, you can't be over mm-hmm. here pounding and doing demo and right. then having dust yeah. on a hamburger over there. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we have to look at the building itself. How are mm. we going to block this off? How are we going to make sure that we we make sure nothing migrates through the ductwork? How do we make sure that this side of the pro- project is a negative pressure so that it's always sucking, uh, nothing's floating over there. Right. It's all going the opposite direction, right? So it's really important for us to look at the... Um, to, to look at safety first, because you can't operate a health facility, a restaurant facility without being safe. Cause God forbid someone ever got sick. That's, that's the right. last thing we want. Right? Yeah. Sick so, or hurt. Yeah. That's right. So putting that, putting that wall in place, putting it and, and when I tell you, we put a wall in place. It wasn't some little plastic wall. It was actually building a wall that separated the kitchen from the remodel. So on the other side of the wall, six inches away, there was a there was an operating kitchen on this a full side of the functioning world. kitchen, but on this side, disaster zone. You're demolishing, you're building, you're cutting, you're sawing, you're grinding. Let me can I to, ask you a question? Sure, Today, sure. like right now, there's people listening to this show and they're like, How did this, how did you do it? Because I can't hire one PM, I can't hire one carpenter. And you did six thousand units. That's six, si- that's cr- and six. not all in the same city. I mean, this is all over the place. How how did you staff up? What did you, who did you have to be as a company so to do that? The number, one, the number one thing to know is I, you can't do it all yourself, right? There, this business is plagued with everybody that wants to, I own this. It's me. It yeah. was not, it was not CDO. It was the brands that worked with us. The, 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 there was numbers of brands. There was 200 teams of people that all came together mm. that took their part to put this together. Now, and when you look at it, look at the contractors, Right. We, we couldn't GC all of them ourselves. So we had to, but we had, to, we were contracted to do that work. So those people had to work for us ah, and we okay. had to support and train other teams. Now, when I tell you about the support and train, it first, it starts off with understanding the project better. So when I say that, go back 20 weeks and understand the parts and pieces that we're going to put in there. Now, once I figure out the parts and pieces in the box, yeah, right. I can get them there because nothing worse than going through a schedule and then finding out, I don't have front counters or I don't have tables and chairs or I, I, I can't, I can't get the, the, the wallpaper or finishes The go backs on, on that big of a scale are what or will kill you. Anytime oh, yeah. you have yeah. go back, that's the killer. So your goal is to get in and get out. Now, in order to get in, you've got to understand your scope of work, right? The schedule. Now, when I tell you breaking down a schedule so that when we hire a subcontractor, we know exactly what we need them. You know, another oftentimes we, we put together bids for somebody, we look at it and go, well, is it 300 hours of electrical work or is it 350 hours of electrical work? When I can give a sub 
the exact schedule. I need four people. I'm going to need them here, here, and here on the schedule. And these are exactly how many hours I'm going to need them for. They're going to need to bring this material. Oh, It dramatically changes the, the, the pricing that you get from the subcontractor. And it dramatically, what, what it does is it helps the sub, the owner of the subcontracting firm, understand that I'm going to make more money faster. That's the secret is that, you know, most of our people in this game are all hoping to make a margin, but because they go back so many times to unfinished work. They don't. Yeah. They don't. Right. When it beats I them deal up. with it all the time. It's, it's, it's sad. And these are great people with their heart in the right place. And they want to do right by the customer. Everybody who listens to my show wants to be, I live to my word. If I say it, I'll do it. And what happens That's is they end up eating it. They eat that profit and they end up, it's their Christmas tree that hurts at the end of the year because they didn't put gifts under it for themselves. And it's that you, a great point. I think any contractor you went to and you gave them a more defined scope and said, this is what the job will be. And then you hold to it, of course, instead of you know, that, demanding they do that, something else. That's the key. Like, let's just go through the schedule real quick. Right? So if you just look yeah. at a two week schedule, right? We knew that if in day one, we didn't get a hundred percent of the demo done. Now you got to imagine this, imagine taking floor tile off of the entire uh, front lobby, taking all the floor tile off the, off all the baseboard, right. all the drywall, all the ceiling fixtures, all the light fixtures. We knew that if in day one, we didn't get that done. Now think about how, how hard this is to get an entire restaurant demoed in one day. Now, it's, yeah. it, it's somewhere on average, it took somewhere 10, uh, uh, 12, 15 people per project to do that. They right. all had to show up at 630 in the morning. Yeah. And they had to know exactly what they're going to do. Now, look, just think about dumpsters. Let's say it takes five 40-yard dumpsters to show up. If the dumpster company alone, that could screw, you could on day one be screwed up by just yeah. your companies alone. That so, doesn't include recycling or separating the recycling and making sure that you, you don't have tainted uh, waste going out. Right. Yeah. As it comes off the wall, metal goes here. This goes here. This right. goes to one dump. This goes to another dumpster. Every single project that we did had a requirement, right? We we had a recycling requirement. We had to take down the bathrooms, right? Imagine that the the people that were working there still had to have a place to go potty, and oh, and, yeah. and we, we, they weren't going to go out in a blue po a porta potty. <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't you? That's the most enjoyable thing in the world. That blue potty. Yeah, Everybody's got to try it once. For you and I, but when you're talking about a 16 year old employee, no, I, hate, I hate it at a concert. I wouldn't want to do it at work. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we had to get upgraded bathrooms, right? So upgraded bathrooms on every one of the projects, right? Just that alone, in, sure, in order for us to take the bathrooms out, we had to put an upgraded bathroom with heat, toilet paper. And we had to, we had to think about making sure there was toilet paper in it every single day because you had contracting people going in there. And right. the employees go in there. Now, some places we said, nope, you know, uh, the contractors operation. go here, staff goes yep, there. Yep. Yeah. Staff yep. goes there. Now, that, that you're adding some price to the, you're adding some cost to the project by putting those upgraded bathrooms in there. The real fancy ones, you know, the kind of nice ones you put out there. On a trailer? But, you're talking about the, the ones that come yeah, on their own right. trailer? Yeah. Yep. yep. You got to figure out running a toilet line. You got to run a sewer line for that. You got to figure out a way to get uh, you but, know, a drain, a drain for that. Go ahead. Can I tell you where I'm stuck? And, I, and I'm, I'm waiting for you to say, but Dominic, you're looking at this all wrong. So I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm exposing my neck on this, Anthony. Yeah. 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 How do I motivate a, a guy who's a laborer on a demolition crew to work that much faster that he's going to get it all done in a day? Where, where am I not seeing this? Well, and, and I'm open to it. I think I'm looking at it wrong. Tell me. The, the entire gig is based on that subcontracting company understanding you're going to make the same amount of money in one day as it would take you to do it in a week. We're going to pay you the same amount of money. We, we but you got to do it in a day. You got to do it in a day. Now, how they motivate their staff is uh, my, my request is always to make sure that they understand at the end of day one, there cannot be. A, a, a piece of drywall hanging. You cannot have missed something. You can look because the guy on day two, if we're not tiling the floor on day two, we're already behind. We're, yeah. we're already behind, right? If, if the front kitchen, if the front lobby of that place wasn't going to, now we would leave the bathroom tile, tile out because we're still moving fixtures in there. Sure. Right. So by Thursday, they had to have an underground inspection completed. Right. So by Monday, we demoed Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We started, under, we started cutting and underground by Wednesday, Thursday morning, we're going to be pouring back so that we can finish the bathrooms in a, in a schedule. But every single part of that restaurant had to be on an exact schedule. Now, 
what happens is when you paint the picture for the staff and people before you get there. Yeah. And I, again, every one of our, so every one of our project managers would show up on the job and meet the team a week before the project happened. Right. And they would go through and they'd look at the guy and go, or listen, you understand your team. I'm looking at five guys here. You this promised must be 12. done. Ah, you okay. promised 12 people. Yeah. Right. You understand. I, I cannot have you show up with five people. You, you remember you bid for $8. I, I didn't ask you before. I, I wanted you, I, by the way, when people came in too low, we said to them, listen, we're yeah. expecting 12. We're going to, you're required to have 12. If you show up without 12 people, you're, you, we're going to subsidize you and it's going to cost you a lot more than that. It won't work. Right. So our, our schedules can't, you can't, a sub can't take you out. If a sub takes you out, right. you're not, it's just like a, a, you know, that what happens in our, in our game is we start to get to a point where we don't set expectations. Now, part of it is because most of us don't have our act together. So we can't, so they show up on a job site and you're not ready for them. So then you can't expect them to be ready. Now, if they show up on a job site and a plumber goes to do his plumbing work and you blow them off today, because you, you know, yesterday you weren't ready for him. Yeah. And you didn't communicate that to the guy. He's going to go to fair. another site. Yeah. He's going to go to another site. Now he starts into the project. He's like, well, the, I have to uh, uh, leapfrog you. <clears throat> the entire project requires that I, as the owner of the project, me, my, my company orchestrated. Has, has to be way more organized than anybody else yes. on, that, on that. And that orchestration doesn't happen when you get there. It's too late. Once you're there, it's too late. Dominic, if we don't start that process a couple of weeks before now in the way that we bid the project, the people that bid those projects, right. they communicate to the people that we're hiring and really paint the picture that, look, here's exactly what's going to happen. Here's the tools. And every time we learn something in the field, that has to go back to the the people that. Well, you contract. did six thousand of these. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are, you know, dialed in on this stuff. Now, really is everybody bad. working an eight-hour day? They're starting at seven. They're ending at you know what is it four or five? Uh, or... Now here, now here's here's a beautiful part of it, right? Mm-hmm. We invented a whole other way of operating, right? One of the things we learned was we the year before that program we had yeah. cameraed one of our job sites, right? Right? We had we, job site cameras and we watched we watched those cameras and we really noticed something. Yeah. From 6 a.m. to 2.30, 3 o'clock, it was asses and elbows and people really working hard. And you could really see the production that's happening. But right. then from like 30, 4 o'clock at night till 6 o'clock in the morning, it's a ghost town. Oh, so it's and unused space. Unused space. And, and our people and our people kept looking at it going, how can we get more people in there in that time? We would call it shift. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd call it uh, trade stacking. How can we trade stack a little bit more? And we'd try to figure out how we could squeeze more people on those job sites. Yeah. And the problem we realized was, we were, we were thinking about it. We were thinking about it wrong. How do we think about it so that how do we use the whole day, 24 hours, right? Mm. And, and some of the people, when we went out to hire them, we moved contracts for certain trades. Like we would, it was great to move all painting tonight, all ceiling work at night. Because there's nothing had, else in the way. You can put your, move your ladders, do everything you need to. And- right. All, all the tile guys had in their contract a section of work that was at night because it was where the floors where people came in and out. We didn't want people stepping over the tile they were coming in. So as you scoped the project yeah. and you set up the schedule, you put that in their scope and you communicated and bought that when you bought the project out with the, with the subcontractor. Right. So then the subcontractor knew, hey, look, I'm going to I'm going to be showing up at nine o'clock at night and I'm going to work or I'm going to work from 6 p.m. to you know 12 p.m. Uh, 12 a.m. or whatever, 12 p.m. Uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, I my, still get my, my full day in. I'm just I'm just working at night. Yeah. Right. Which is isn't that really common for banks and credit unions and financial institutions anyways, that you do the work at night. You're not there. It, it's really difficult to schedule night work. And now here's what we've learned about night work. If you if I work all day long today and they say to you, hey, do you mind keep working and go all night? Oh, that's not well. fair. It's not fair. And I'm not going to give you my best work. Right. And there's no way you're, and it's unsafe, right? It's scary. It's unsafe. We put people in bad situations, but when I buy the project out, when I go to bid, if I notify you that, Hey, look, because what was great about our schedules is we're so precise at our schedules. When we're buying the project out, I can tell you the exact schedule you're going to have now, not, not here, here. I I can tell you right now, because we we did uh, the, the biggest variable you had was permitting. So what we really started doing. Yeah, I would imagine that the city, you know, getting a city inspector to do your schedule is another thing altogether because, you know, inspectors are uh, uh, a special. They they see the world in in a different way. Well, what's really great about it was we really established communication with 
the top people in every one of the communities. We went to the community and said, look, these are very tight. These are open restaurants. We cannot have it. Now, the problem with most of our, our communication with inspectors are we wait too long. We're, we're, we're behind on the project. And then You're we call stressed. it inspector, and yeah. we're stressed. We call them stressed. I need you now, 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 now. Cause if I don't get you now, 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 now. And imagine what that sounds like. Inspector's like, dude, I'm, I'm just, I don't operate this way. Yeah, your problem on your side is not a disaster on my side. And it happens all day, every day. Now, but I can say to a, when I can say that to them when I'm in permitting and I'm coming out of permit, I'm going to say to you, I need, I need an underground inspection on Thursday at 7 a.m. four weeks from now. Mm. That's a dramatic difference in what do I need to do to make that happen. Do you mean you're Permit running this construction business like a business? Is that what you're saying, Anthony? Oh, well, that, that's, that's crazy. The that's the future of our game. If people aren't thinking that way today, the yeah. red, you know, for, for thousands of years, we operated, look, the Coliseum and most of the construction projects I was on in early my, parts of my life were the same. They carried heavy, heavy stuff over to a place, they banged on it, and all of a sudden, you know, we made something. But that, that today doesn't work. The speed by which the future of construction is happening. Right. If people are not, if every single owner that's listening to me right now is not thinking how I can go faster, you will be out of this business in the next three to five years. There may be a couple of linger, like, like taxi drivers, there's a couple of taxi drivers still out there, but the guys who moved to Uber, right, dramatically changed the way the business happened, right? And, and you now know, remember what it was like to get a, a taxi before Uber? You never yeah. knew when your taxi was going to yeah, show up. Yeah, the you service know? was horrendous, yeah, horrendous. Yeah. Right, and you walked in, you didn't know if it was going to be five minutes for a cab driver or, or an hour and five minutes, so you had to call early, you had to go to er airport early. Today, that doesn't work today. I, I now call Uber. I know exactly. I can watch the car come to me. Yeah. Well, the future of our game is exactly that. The speed by which projects are coming at us mm -hmm. is dramatically. The amount of information that we have on every project is, is going to change. Now, a lot of our business is lagging, right? There's a lagging and people want to hold on to the old way of doing it. And, and people are going to be like, well, well, AI is going to take my job. No, it's not going to take you. It's just going to be your assistant that helps you make your job smarter. Right. So I can I'll be able to look at a job when I'm buying it out. I'll know I'll be able to look at and know where materials are. Right. When when they spec out, I have this HVAC unit and right. I'm bidding the project. I can go to the owner and go, look, I can see the production schedule of that HVAC company. It's not going to be possible for that to work in our schedule. Do we right. want to opt out and put another pro, uh, spec out another unit? Here, by the way, is what's available. I can I can I'll be able to look at things. Oh, so, so when smaller. you're talking about AI, you're you're not necessarily talking about hands on the hammer. You're talking oh. about in the supply chain, in the communication, in the bidding process, in the buyouts, and all of those things. That's where you're talking. AI, by the way, Anthony, why don't I let you do what is AI so people understand that? It's because it's an acronym that some people might not know. Artificial intelligence, right? right. So, right now, machine world, brains, machine learning. Yeah. Right. To be able to look at, by the way, while they're designing the project, right? So, today, the biggest problem we have in our whole thing is that. You know, we, we work for a really fancy coffee shop, right? And they, they build a lot of them. And they have these amazing designers, beautiful design. They do beautiful restaurants, beautiful coffee shops, right? And they're all over the world. And one of the biggest problems we have is their designers will come up with a product. And it might be six or eight months before the project's ever started. And they, right. you know, they design it and it goes back out, back and forth to operations. People love it. They go, oh, look how pretty that is. But then we go to build it and, and it we find work. out, well, we, can, we, we can't get the product. We can't get the tile. We, COVID happened. Oh. <laughs> COVID so, happens. Yeah. Right. All of a sudden now all the projects, all the product that we need isn't available. And right. now we have to start subsidizing other, you know, substituting other projects, which then bastardizes their design. Design work. intent. Yeah. Their design intent right. is no longer. And then they're not happy. And then they have a discussion because there's some VP of design who's just not happy. Those things are real. There's barges right now stuck on ports all over the place. They're either empty or they can't get in or out because of weather. There's, they can't get over there. They can't come back over here. It's a bit of a problem right now. It is a, you know, that's something that none of us have been able to handle and it's frustrating, but even in the places when we don't have the barge problem, it's in the spots where we haven't thought through buying out the tools and parts and pieces until it's too late. I mean, how many of our projects are, are, are we, we get awarded a project and our, I say to our team, if we've started the project, and we have not bought out every single item on the project, everything. And people are like, well, I don't need that for eight weeks. Great. 
Stop being the kind of contractor that calls up vendors and jerks their chain every day for something you needed tomorrow. Hand to mouth. Yeah. Got any white melamine? <laughs> Got any of this? Yeah. We, right. So you know what I'm seeing, Anthony, increasingly, and, and you're right, we haven't seen this before, is the, the GCs, the developers are saying, I want my lobby to look a certain way. I want, I want this building to have consistency. You can't mix and match all of the different components. I can't have two of this kind of light, three of that one, because we couldn't get it. So now for the, for the subs that are asking, they are saying, yes, go ahead and buy that stuff today. So we guarantee that we have all the same light fixtures so that we have all the same grab bars so that we have all the same door package, because otherwise there's a supply problem. You go to get it from the supplier and they say it hasn't come from whatever country it's being made in, but I've got this substitution, but the substitution's not the same. And you can't build a high quality, fancy place for premium dollars. When somebody walks in and goes, none of those light fixtures match. None of those doors are the same. The grab bars are different. What's what's going on here? And so they're allowing them now for the G, for the for the uh, subs that are asking. The GCs are saying yes. Go ahead and buy that. Store it in your warehouse. It's another conversation. And then we're ready to build. We build. It's exactly right. Yeah. Getting on top of those conversations early, right? Getting on top of your steel packet, your submittals. Look, we have a rule around here. From the day that we get awarded a project, if yeah. all submittals aren't submitted within seven days, pick another sub. If your sub can't figure out, look, we've got you awarded, giddy up. Look, we, we, if you're going to act that way in submittals, yeah. you're going to act that way on the job site, right? If wow. your company can't figure out how to put together a submittal package yeah. in seven days, you're, you know, look, we've communicated with you. When we buy you out. We're going through that contracting part. You're going to need submittals and we need these in seven days. When you sign on that dot, you're committed to seven mm. days of submittals. Now, now, look, if someone says to me, hey, Anthony, we're trying to submit, but this vendor doesn't is missing something, we'll communicate that. We're not out to be jerks about it. But look, if we look at somebody and they're just being lazy about it, and sometimes they're, they're, they can't see that what, what the impact of that is. Look, because they not, may not be on the job site. That, that sub may not be on the job site for a month or two months, right? Yeah. But we know yeah. right now, if that submittal package isn't submitted, when we're buying everybody out, we're that's a problem. Well, we're not, not just that we're not going to make the day because if we don't start looking at exactly what you were just talking about, if we don't look at the, the sinks, the toilet fixtures, the bath the locks, all, everything, all, all of that early, early enough somewhere, we're going to spend as much time respecting products that weren't intended to be there throughout uh, the project. We'll spend so that, much- just on a curtain wall of glass. If that was the if you had to redo all that glass and then it has to be re-engineered. Uh, now I'm getting stressed. Don't you stressing me out? Well, the, 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 we spend more time <laughs> fixing things that we right. that we could have solved early on. Yeah. Every hour spent in pre-construction work equals ten hours of post of, of in-construction work. Right. I, Everything that I think about before I start the project, before I pick up a tool, right. every hour I spend painting the picture, looking at the products, looking at the parts and pieces, takes ten hours out of my project. Every hour you so every hour you spend in planning saves 10 hours on the actual management or the actual build. Both. Yeah, yeah. Both. The, that's what yeah, the management or the build. So you're saving time by investing it up front. I would imagine that you've you've changed quite a few companies' lives because in doing six thousand units, you have probably have some subs who've grown up uh, next to you who <laughs> followed you around and said, Yeah, we're on this system, let's do more. We grew up, you know, you know the, 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 what was really amazing was the company that hired us to do this work, right? Yeah. To work on this program with, 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 with all these people, they pushed us. And, and when I say that their vision of us, right? I remember the first time we got the first project with them, they, you know, that's the kind of relationship that we, we, we look for. We love those brands because we partner with them. They're the kind of brands that make us a better company by working with them. They're big and they're bold mm. and they, they kind of, being around them, like remember that energy we're talking about yeah. being around big people, right? Have you be bigger and bolder, right? Yep. As, a, as opposed to the other guys who are, who are the time sucker, the, the, the life, this life suckers, the, the guys who you, suck at the energy. That's right. You've soul. heard it. You've heard it said before. You and I are more like the five people we hang out with. So we have that's to right. choose very carefully who we hang out with. Cause if you hang out with time suckers, negative people who are in denial, who have scarcity in their lives, who place blame, make excuses, you're going to be a lot like them. But if you and I hang out with people who take responsibility, take action, take ownership, then we're going to be more like that. 
it's just, it's just the way the world works. I found for most of my career until I really changed this mindset, really took on and adopted. I'm responsible. The buck stops at my desk, mm. right? It's, if anytime I'm pointing at anybody on my team, somewhere I'm going wrong, right? I told that guy, he told that guy, you, I told that guy to do this. Well, great. You telling them didn't work here. We practice a, a practice. We call the echo, mm. right? And what we mean, mean by that is just because it comes out of my mouth yeah. and landed over there. We're not sure how it got taken. We're not sure how they took it or what they, their dog bit them this morning. The, the, somebody peed on the carpet. Uh, the, 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 they got a ticket. Uh, look what's going on in their brain and how they interpret what I said. Yeah isn't always the way I meant to say it, right? Or the way I said it. And I, I leave them in a spot that says, you're supposed to interpret this. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that they echo it back to us. And they echo it back uh, in a way that we understand that they understand, that they clearly understand the scope of work. And if we don't do the echo, if we right. don't send that back, when we get to the job site, their interpretation of that, let, let me give you a great one. When I, whenever I say to you, we're going to mobilize. Right. I, I can walk around any room. And let's just say that every single sub in there, we're, we on a schedule says day one, mobilize. Dominic, what does mobilize mean? To me, it means we're going to get started. We're going to get started. Here, Dominic, what, what does the end of day one look like? Uh, well, I understand that if I'm your demolition contractor, by the end of day one, we are out of there. You're, d- you're done. Yeah, right? we're so, done. So now, now, if I ask that question to 10 people, in the, in the, here, Eric, what does mobilize mean? Get rolling. Get, get rolling, get started. What happens at the end of day one? Uh, get rolling, get started. Whatever I've been told to get done by the end of day one. All right, you're told whatever done. Look, if I ask 10 people in that picture, you're that's gonna get those 10 nebulous, answers. Nebulous words that mean nothing. That sounds like it might. So one guy might say, I bring all my tools over there. <laughs> Another guy might say, I, I stop by, right? Yeah. It doesn't paint the picture clear enough so that I can set expectations I, for it. I know, I know you have a Spanish background, but and I, I'm, I'm open to being wrong, but muebles in Spanish just means furniture. So if you maybe say that to somebody who doesn't understand, you know, who's still trying to grasp the language or who's under stress, and they're like, day one, we're going to mobilize. They're like, day one, furniture's going in? Okay, yeah, I'm on it. I'll do that. But the, I, I'm making a joke, but it's cultural, it's cultural overlay, right? Right. They heard right. what they thought they needed to hear. Day one, we're moving in furniture. No, 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 no. Day one, we're getting started. Yeah. It, it happens. It happens to our young PMs all the time. They walk up and they're like, yeah, 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 I got, I got it. And they didn't get it. They just didn't want to, they're too embarrassed to say, I didn't get it. Right. And we yeah. try to create this culture that says, I didn't understand a word you said. And I'm <laughs> in order for me not to piss you off in about in, in the next 15 minutes, because I, I didn't understand what you said. I'll I need my to job. explain. Yeah. I yeah. need to explain this to me a little bit clearer. And, and if it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm asking a few times, I promise it, my intention is to serve you well. And I can't do that if I don't understand what I'm doing. And that's, that, that somewhere has to be the behavior and the culture that we create around the people that we have. We've got to be in that spot that says, uh, uh, yeah. I'm open to just let speaking me, a little bit. Let me change directions here for a second. And we're going to start to wind out because I know you've got other things to do today, but how much how much time and effort, because you've mentioned this a few times, there's been flavors of it in our conversation already. How much time and effort do you put into the culture, into, into training and supporting your people in the company? You know, what's fun about it is I've just recently stepped back, or not ever say, about a year and a half ago, I stepped mm. back as a president. And uh, what was really amazing was my wife, uh, Sophia, became the president of the company and she's run, you know, she has a legal background and she was always part of the company. She's always doing all her contracts and all that stuff. But she stepped in and really, really, she taught me a huge lesson. And it was really humbling, right? Because as the founder of a company, all of who I was was tied up in being- Was wrapped up in that, yeah. Oh, let me, sh- let me sh- I'm the president of CEO, right? And I walked around with my ego and, and it took something for me to stand back. And, you know, with the business coach I had at the time, she would literally take me, to my, take me in the office and she'd go, yeah, you're not allowed to, on the outside of this door. You're not allowed to walk out and tell people what to do anymore. You've got a whole team of people that do that. And what I learned was it was so difficult because I had so much significance tied up in being the doer. And all of a sudden I I started finding that these amazing people that we had hired did way better. The more I stuck with, now it wasn't easy at first because they they stumbled a little bit, just like I did. But the first time I stumbled, someone believed in me, just like that guy who who hired me at Discovery Zone. I didn't even know how to corporate travel. I remember I I didn't even know how to book a hotel room. And they had to help yeah. me and they, yeah. didn't, they didn't fire me the first day. They let me stumble a little bit, 
And all of a sudden they knew that they'd hire a great person, hire yeah. great people, trust them, right? Even when they stumble or, or they walk in and go, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And be with them, help them, help them get through it. You're not going to give up on a, a little kid who doesn't know how to walk. You don't say, that's it. You didn't walk. I, I'm done trying to, you know, you help them walk, right? We, we hold their hand and hire great and people and trust them to do their job. It's amazing that you say that. I'm, I'm hoping you picked it up from one of my podcasts, please God. Yeah, yeah, I hope, yeah. I hope you got that from me because, but I, 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 I a hundred percent agree. Trust in the people, you know, hire great people, train them and support them and then trust them to do their job. I don't want to look over your shoulders. We're going to put some metrics in place. We're going to track things. We're going to talk. We're going to, I'm, I'm okay communicating. I mean, I like to communicate, but then we're going to find out what's working, what's not. We're going to fix it as we go. I love it. If you, if we believe something, the biggest mantra I have, mm. the world is happening for me, right? This, the, all this stuff I'm going to learn is happening for me. It's ah. not happening to me, right? It's not happening around me. It, it's happening. Look, this is all this, this, this planet that we're on has us be these amazing creative people. Yeah. Right? If you believe in the magical part of people, right? And don't just keep looking at everybody because look, when I'm at my lower self, I can get to, especially when I'm hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Forget those times. I am I'm a, a different. I'm person. a Snickers commercial. When I get hungry. I, yeah. I, I'm the, the Joe Pesci comes out. That's right. The Joe I Pesci. The soprano, the soprano in me all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm that guy in construction. Hey, really? You messed that up. I break yeah. you. you know, like all of a sudden, <laughs> there. And, and I got to watch out for that guy. Cause I can really do some damage in relationships there. So, yeah. It's... So all that stuff is me, personal development stuff. And, 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 and my, my wife comes in and she builds this culture of family. Right. She really, really takes on that we're a family and, and mm. let's look at their families. And, and today our people have a much better quality of life. And I, you know, even here, even though I, I feel like I did great stuff and it was a lot of fun when I was here and, and, and more of this very coach attitude. Today, I get to spend time really celebrating them. I get to do one on ones with each of our leadership people. And it's been just such a, a pleasure for me to evolve. And, and that culture really take it on, take it on, right? Founders sometimes are the bottleneck of a brand. And as we look at it and go, all right, maybe it's time for me to step aside and trust that uh, and find some great people. And that takes a little bit of work. It's going to take a little bit of work for all of you guys that are out there looking for great help. Find They're out there. But they're you gotta, out there. First of, it's hard to find. That's why they're great. It's hard to find when you keep looking like people, like you're the only one that can do it, right? When I, when I have that mindset that I'm the only one that knows how to do this, if for sure, I'm not, I'm going to, everybody I look at is going to not be good enough. When I, when I trust that people that are out there are amazing, that, that in the people that we find, uh, there are some great characters and they're going to bring something I never even had. I didn't even know that yet, but I know that they will, um, you know, all of a sudden I get to see some change. Well, I hope everybody takes that message away. Cause right now the biggest question I deal with, and it's, it's probably one that you hear a lot as well is I can't find, I can't find people much less. I can't find good people. And that's the key. The reason they're good people is because they're hard to find. The reason they're hard to find is because they're good or great people, but we have to go find them. It's hard to get that first person on the team. It's a little easier to get the second person. And then the third, the fourth, the fifth come a lot faster. Uh, Anthony, it, oh, go ahead. Sorry. It makes it even harder when my ego tells me I'm the only one good enough. Right. So if we step back and trust that maybe just maybe I can let go of that part of it, when I, when I step back for me, what yeah. the biggest learning I've had was when I let go and realized my wife had this and, and she's going to bring something completely different to the team that I couldn't see yeah. and trust yeah. that. And it took some trust. It took, believe me, because I, this is my baby, right? I started, I, it's my baby, but all of a sudden today I have all these other options I never had when I kept holding on to that idea. So uh, yes, uh, Dominic, uh, it took a lot of coaches, coaches just like yourself that came into my business and, I had to help change my, I, I really had to become malleable and really look at the business from a whole Open to learning. Point. Yeah. You have to become, you have to go from being a teacher all the time, showing everybody else how to run the business to be a student every once in a while and, and have an open mind. Um, and speaking of having an open mind, I know I've listened to your show. I've been a guest on your show. Do you want to share with everybody what your, your podcast is called? Sure, sure, sure. I would love it, and guys, and, and all, all of you, please come over and, and join us. It, it's it's called the Future of Development Podcast. Uh, it's on all the major brands, and what I try to do is find all the technology, future thinkers, people that are like like us that are looking for, you know, for me, I'm always looking for that bit that can really help uh, mold my business, mold our ideas, and really look at what's coming at it. So uh, the Future of Development is really trying to find 
uh, inspirational people that uh, uh, have that new spark and kind of keep leading us to, into uh, what's coming down the pipeline for our, for the, the development world. Yeah. And where else can we find you? Because are you, are you still at the CDO group day to day? Yep. I'm still out there. You're Anthony at CDO group.com, Anthony at CDO group.com and a great way to get a hold of me. And uh, on our website at CDO group.com, uh, you'll be able to find uh, uh, our contact information. There's a great team of people there that uh, uh, can work with you. And if you want to be a sub, or if you're a subcontractor or one of those, and you want to bid for us, uh, our estimating team is always looking for amazing guys and amazing teams of people that are, that are looking to uh, do projects and uh, you, get, you can get us to us by uh, cdogroup.com. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Anthony. You're, I can already tell you're making an impact. You're changing a lot of people's lives. You're keeping a lot of subs employed, at, but you're doing it with confidence. They know that I'm, I'm hearing it from you. They know that if they, you know, get that first job done and learn as they go, they can do the second and the third and the fourth. And that kind of consistency makes it easy for a lot of people to build a company. Dominic, I am so proud to be on your show. And I, I, I got to tell you, the kind of thinking that you are, and every time you and I have these conversations, I walked out, I walk out way more excited and, and, you know, continuously looking to be more malleable. And thanks for your, your, your show is inspired. You have inspired me thanks, man. and uh, a lot of what I, what I get to be in the business is listening to your show. And uh, I'm grateful to be on it today. And I, I really am. I'm, I'm humbled and grateful to be on the show. So thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Anthony. Wonderful. Glad we've got a chance to meet and do the show. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Thank you, sir.